Okay, so we are going to start our double exposure. And I'm going to click new project. I'm going to type in double exposure. And then I'm going to keep it at pixels. I'm going to type in a thousand by a thousand. I'm going to leave the DPI at 72 and I'm going to leave it at light and I'm going to hit create. So now I'm going to open and place my two images, my subject image and my background image. And I'm going to drag it so it's as large as my square. So I'm holding my shift key, dragging a corner. And click the check. And I'm going to do the same for my background. Okay, and I also would like to have my waterfall on the other side. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this. <clears throat> All right, and I'm gonna rasterize both of my images. So I'm gonna right click on them in the layers palette. And Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, turn off the eyeball on my background layer, and I am on the subject layer. So I'm going to select the background and delete it. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, control plus plus. I'm going to use my magic wand. And I have my feathering set to two pixels. I have um, my tolerance at 30. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna click once. And now every click after that, I'm holding down my shift key to add to that selection. Okay, so that pixel that I just clicked was very similar to the darkness of her hair. So it selected her hair as well. So I'm gonna edit step backward. And I'm gonna turn off contiguous and see if that helps. So again, holding my shift key. Nope, that didn't help. Okay, so again, I'm gonna step backward. And I'm not going to click the dark greens. I'm going to just circle them with my lasso uh, tool. So I'm going to continue with other um, values. And I'm also holding my shift key again. Nah. Control Z. Oh, that one took care of the dark. Okay, so I'm going to do a little work on this back side of her head and also this um, in the front on the bottom and I also to take care of the hat in the front. So I'm going to use my Alt key because I want to get rid of a selection and my lasso tool.
Okay. It's really messy. I don't have a very steady hand. So I might resort to the pen tool, but I think that came out okay. It's ugly, but it's done. I'm holding my Alt key, which is getting rid of the selection. And I'm shift. Okay, so I am choosing the background, so I don't want this selected. All right, I'm going to go with this. So I think it looks pretty okay. So now what I want to do is I want to delete this. So I'm going to go to edit, clear, and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to get rid of my marching ants, control B. Um, Okay, there's still some wonky bits. So I'm going to go around it with my eraser. Again, I don't really have an eraser in hand, so I'm going to have to do that eraser. So I'm going to open my navigator tool, which allows me to zoom way in and then find that area. Um, my artboard with this little red box. That might be a little too far in, but. I'm going to go about here. <clears throat> so I have my eraser tool selected. My brush, you can see what size my brush is. And I'm going to bring the hardness down. I don't want, want it to be a really smooth line. I want it to be a little bit feathered so it's not so harsh. Um, let me move my um, brush. Oh, that's too big. All right, that's okay. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of hover around the outside and just get rid of some pointy shards of hair here. That was a big chunk right under that. Uh, and this also helps for these little bits and pieces that you can see are still here. Very, very light, but they are here and they will make a difference. Okay, now I can use my, my this brush is too big to get in here. So I'm going to use my bracket keys on the keyboard to make my brush smaller. And start doing it a little bit later. Because you could cut yourself on this hair over here. Again, using my bracket keys to make my brush smaller. Right, I'm going with that. I think that's, yeah, except for maybe up here in the hat. I think I'm going to try to use the magic wand because that's pretty significant. Holding down my shift key. I am not going to use my. Magic wand. Oh, however, why aren't you releasing on me? This is a test. Okay, we're not releasing. Research tool. 
Okay, I'm having a glitch. So I'm gonna save this, close it, and open it up again. All right, we're back, and I just opened it back up again, and let's see if my eraser's working. Yay. Crack it key, making it smaller. I'm gonna try the magic wand thing again. Holding down my shift. I would really like to do the whole thing at once. But I don't know. What did you just do? Um yeah, I'm not sure what I just did, so. Well, I'm going to edit clear and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Okay, that one okay, except up here was not selected close enough. So I'm going to do it again. Let's see if it's close. Actually, I think the rest of these areas. It's really so super light up here that it looks really and I'm not sure if it's going to come back to bite me, but I am just kind of being sloppy because it looks all right. We'll find out when finish it. And then you'll know whether or not to do this. And what I'm trying to do is keep it closed. This is going to determine the shape of our double exposure layer, so we really should keep it as neat as possible. Even though you can't see it. Actually, if I turn this off, you can see it. This is way going to keep it neat. Yikes. Okay, no. Okay, I'm going with that. Yeah, I'm going with that. Except for maybe that. Okay, done. Great. So I'm going to go to the magic um, to the magnifying glass and go to fifty one. All right, so here we are with that. Looks pretty good. I mean, pretty good. I'm gonna go a little smaller. So now I want to select her. So the easy way to select her is to not select her. So I'm gonna click in the background with my magic wand, and then I'm gonna hold on my shift key and click all the little areas of nothing. And now I'm going to go up to select and inverse. So now she is selected. Oh, and apparently some other stuff around the edge. All right, so I'm going to do a quick cleanup there. See how all these marching ants are around the edge? There shouldn't be anything around the edge because there's nothing there to be to have selected, but apparently there are little, little crumbs still there. So I'm going to deselect and I'm going to take my eraser. And I'm going to make it really big, hard eraser, and I'm going to go, okay, that's not right. I'm going to go a little too big. I'm not feeling very safe. So now I'm going to do that again, and there should not be anything on the outside. So my magic wand clicking around her, holding down my shift key. Everything that's transparent, I'm going to click. And then I'm going to select inverse. Okay, much better. So now, while I have this selection done, I'm going to go to my bridge layer and I'm going to turn the eyeball back on. And so now I have an outline of 
her head. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the rectangle with the circle in the middle. And it is going to make a thumbnail in the layers palette attached to the um, bridge layer the shape of her head. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to change the opacity of this layer. So you can see, oops, I need to do that. So that I can see both layers, but still more bridge. Um, I'm looking at, I'm not looking at the face right now, I'm looking at the hat. I want to still recognize it as a hat and the hair and the shoulder. Um, it's okay that the face is covered because we're going to paint that out. So I'm okay with the opacity of this, this situation here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make absolutely sure that I'm on my uh, layer mask. And you can tell because I have a dotted line around it. And then I'm going to make sure that my color is black. I think actually that should be the opposite, but let's paint it and see. Or it's either thick or small. Yes, okay, so that's the right color, although that is too much. So I'm going to step back from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. So my color is black in my layers palette. I'm in the paintbrush. And then I'm going to look up at the top options bar. And I'm going to change opacity to, I'm going to say somewhere around 30. And my flow to me is somewhere around 40. And I'm going to paint into the face gently. So I want to pull that out, but I don't want it to be completely devoid of the bridge. So the important part is the eyes. And I still want to see some of the double exposure. Okay, so I kind of like that. I think I'm going to paint some back in. So to paint some back in, I'm going to switch my color to white. And paint again. So I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to zoom into her eyes. And I think I'm going to try something. I'm going to put it back to black because I want my eyes to come out. I'm going to make my brush the size of her eye. And I'm just kind of painting it out. So not, not completely, although a lot of that is reflection in her eye. Um, just a little bit so you can really easily see that. And then this is kind of distracting on the nose. I think I'm going to change my opacity. Uh, I don't know if I can do it because it's probably going to change everything. Okay, I'm actually I'm actually okay with this. So I'm going to make it. Oops. And then I'm going to turn my background layer back on. I kind of like that. So I think I'm good. Um, with that, so yay. Um, so here is our double exposure project. So now I'm going to save it. First, I'm going to save it as a PSD because I want to keep the layers in case I want to play with it again. So it is called double exposure PSD. It's probably one of seven that I've saved. Um, I'm going to open this and say show in folder, and I'm going to change the name of that. Okay, so it is 529, so it's this one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rename this and call it the real subject exposure. All right. And oh, so that is the real one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten this. So I'm going to right click on my bridge layer, 
And I think, yeah, the very bottom is flat image. And now I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So file, export as JPEG. And of course, this is now one of the exciting JPEG images. So hit save. It is 530. I don't think that's safe. File, export images, JPEG. All right, well, I can open up my, my other one and save it. Oh, that's because I didn't click it. There we are. Okay, so that was. This one, so I'm going to rename that one. You don't have to do this. I just have so many. Um, versions. All right, and there we are. The end.